A very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Ashwini Kumar Kota, and on behalf of my company, Excel Pro, I welcome you all today to this micro webinar titled E-Learning Gamification, Mapping Learning Content to Player Type. A word of caution though, this is an advanced webinar. This is not a basic webinar. So I presume all of you are aware of what is gamification, what is a game, how a game is different from gamification, what are game mechanics, what are game dynamics, which would mean either you have uh, already experienced gamification, are working on gamification, doing something about it, or desire to do something about it. Just in case what I've spoken in the last few second, seconds makes you uncomfortable, you feel, oh my God, maybe I'm in the wrong place. No, you're not. If you're not aware of any of these things, please do not worry. Uh, after this webinar, please do drop by at my YouTube channel, Excel Pro eLearning's YouTube channel. You will find a series of past webinars I've done earlier, and I've run in detail on how to go about understanding gamification, e-learning gamification, etc. Still, you need more clarity. You're free to come back to me, speak to me, drop a chat message on the website. I'm here to help you with that. With that confidence on your mind, please walk the talk with me on e-learning gamification. Let's look at how you can map learning content to player type. First and foremost, Whenever the word gamification comes in, when you walk into your boss's chamber and say, okay, look, I want to gamify my training or e-learning program. The first question before the person asks about the budget, the first question the person will ask you is, why do you want to gamify your training or e-learning program? What is wrong with the current intervention? Why do you want to do it? So that's where the first question begins. Why do you want to gamify your training and e-learning programs? I'm sure you have your answers set out, but I've got a few of my own here, which normally are the common answers which I see in the market. First and foremost being engaging. We are trying to enhance the engagement level of the learner with the intervention to get better results. What you enjoy doing, you learn faster and better. It's as simple as that. If you love it, you will be more involved in it. You are more involved in it automatically. The results are going to be better. Peer work may be collaboration or competition or both. Works wonders for the human being as well as the human spirit. We are all hardwired, pre-programmed, whatever you can call it, to collaborate and compete. Collaborate and compete. At different times, we collaborate with different people under different banners, different circumstances. At the same time, we also compete. So as long as elements of collaboration and competition are involved, they bring out the best in all of us. Gamification automatically transforms any learning content into a hands-on mode, irrespective of whether that learning content is of a particular kind, like a simulation or activity, doesn't matter. Gamification makes it hands-on to as much extent as possible. And last and most important, there's always motivation and a sense of achievement. All these things put together make it more engaging. If you're looking at creating a highly engaging intervention to achieve desired results, I'm sure gamification, if done the right way, can work wonders for you. Now, keeping that concept and theory aside, first and foremost area of the gear shift or a quantum shift or a mental shift, whichever kind of shift you want to think in your mind, please do think because the shift has to happen in your mind first, rest will happen later on. Once you decide to gamify, think of your learner as a gamer. The learner is no longer an ordinary learner. The learner has become a gamer now in your mind. If you can't think of a learner as a gamer, you will rather than gamifying the learning content, you will do something else altogether, a put on stuff which might not work. So first of all, position your learner as a gamer. So what happens now, in addition to the element of learning, all those elements of gamification, sense of achievement, sense of winning, sense of so-and-so, what we spoke about, they come and align with our learner here and align together in a manner to achieve desired results for them and for you. So I hope you focus on that. Think of your learner as a gamer. That's a prime message I'm giving you. The moment I say that, you see, ah, it's good, fine, done, what next? What next is that? When was the last time you've done that? Do you really know how to think of your learner as a gamer? That's the question. So many times we jump onto the bandwagon and say, yes, I will do it without having a clue how to do it or maybe half baked knowledge of doing it. Please do not do that. The idea is to say, I will start thinking of my learner as a gamer from now on. How am I going to do it? 
for that we go to the next element we look up to the experts so today i'm going to talk about how we can use bartels test in context to e learning some of you might be aware of uh, uh, professor richard bartel who is a prominent game researcher author and a professor an authority on on video games he has written uh, books on that and he is the one who's brought out the bartels test bartels test is a very interesting mechanism by which you can understand what kind of gamer are you you take a bartels test you get to know okay i am this kind of gamer it's it's prominently designed for the video game industry now what do we do we are not a video game industry we are e learning industry we're talking about learning here so we look at bartels test understand what they're doing and how we can dovetail or map the orientation of bartels test in context to e learning so let's first understand what exactly is bartels test now when professor bartel created this framework here what he's looking at is very simple create an x axis create a y axis on the x axis on the left side you'll find players on the right side you'll find the world does it mean players are away from the world no it means our player if he wish he or she wishes to interact more with the players to play the game the desire to engage with other players is high we put the coordinate more towards the x side uh, on the on the left side if the desire to explore the world is higher than desire to coordinate with other players then we push the point towards the right side on the x axis similarly if a person likes to act would mean act solo i want to do it i want to do this i do i want to achieve this so when a person moves up on the y axis when the person desires to do things by himself or herself more on the contrary if the person likes to interact with others to achieve what the person wants to achieve in the game then the person moves down on the y axis a typical x y axis plane all of us know what it is so whenever you look at yourself of course there is a scientific way of doing it i'm only giving the model to you right now so when you look at x axis and y axis automatically four quadrants get formed in the four quadrants we got killers achievers explorers and socializers now for us how the quadrants are formed how the players and are analyzed that is not so important in context to our discussion today the focus is on there are four kinds of gamers out there and each kind of gamer is unique in his or her own way so first is the killers second is the achievers third explorers fourth socializers so if a person is oriented to be more by himself or herself and yet interacts with other players we call them as killers more by himself or herself but explores the world achievers more interacting with others explore the world explorers interact with other players interact with every in general interaction 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 socializers conceptually this is all we need to know right now but if you are very curious and would love to dive deep the net is full of content on this you can always explore check out and learn more it's a beautiful subject but what we pick up from here killers achievers explorers and socializers so when i look at my learner and say my friend from now on you're a gamer so the person is no longer an ordinary gamer the person comes with one more subtitle attached what kind of gamer is he and now the whole table twists or we can say the game turns or whatever you can call it because we are not talking about individual learners or gamers we are talking about an organization this organization has got an objective or a vision and a goal then the organization has created a certain set of roles in those roles they put the people these people are supposed to be having certain kind of competencies which help them to do their roles better now for those competencies the organization goes out and hires the people based on competencies then trains them further to hone their competencies then evaluates them based on competencies to achieve desired results and rewards this whole machinery out there and our thing comes and fits into it where does it fit in at the level of competency so which means the player the kind of orientation what he keeps and the learning content and the job role and the learning objective they all have to synchronize with each other seamlessly how let's take a look first and foremost we look at the first quadrant understand what the first quadrant is all about it is all about focus on winning participants like competition not always against one another but could be against a class clock trainer they just want competition i want to compete i want to win now you know this kind of psychology where it comes from these people are engaged by leaderboards ranking competition power 
Suddenly, if I say, how about sales training? Bang on, you relate to it. Why? The element of sales is all about targets, numbers, achievement. I want to win it. I want it. I want it. So if you look at a certain bunch of salespeople and you're doing a training program or rather an e-learning program for salespeople, we're driven day in and day out by number, achievement, number, achievement kind of a thing. And if your gamified e-learning intervention is mapped out to that particular context, you have a good, good blend out there. Your probability of success goes up automatically. Now, don't look at the person here, the word of caution here, because for the same person, we'll be doing a sales training program, then we'll be doing a compliance program, then we do a team building program. Word of caution, we are not talking about gamers and players here. We are talking about contextual learning content. The gamer and a learner in contextual learning content. If my learning content is of a sales training to achieve numbers, automatically it's ingrained or inbuilt to achieve certain things. So the person psychology, the thinking pattern, the content and the game theme all blend in seamlessly here. So it's all about what kind of action I want induced. So the action is mapping to that kind of a player. The game theme also has to be of the same kind. The second kind we're talking about are the achievers. So focus on attaining status, achieving preset goals quickly, prefer well-defined rules, defi definition, specific definitions, clear objectives. So automatically it's an achievement mindset here. So what are we talking about? When does somebody have an achievement mindset? What kind of training program or e-learning intervention orients people to have a sense of achievement? Then automatically, if you see, if I'm doing a leadership program, if I'm doing a goal orientation program, so these kind of intervention, I'm giving generic examples because I have a diverse audience today. And if you look at your organization, your context, your learning need, list out the top three or five training programs or e-learning interventions you conduct and automatically can pinpoint and say, what kind of mindset am I inducing through this particular training intervention? Because it maps onto the competency eventually. So if your training intervention is oriented to a sense of achievement, being there in the person's mindset to achieve the goal, that's objective. Achiever mindset is what will kindle through the gamified intervention. So the game theme I have should have an element of achievement. Like for example, we have a popular game which, which we like use time and again, something like a treasure hunt. So what's a treasure hunt? A treasure hunt is all about doing something, 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 and finally the sense of achievement. That's what's all about treasure hunt. So these kind of themes, I'm just giving a random example. You can create any game theme. At Excel Pro, we do a lot of gamified e-learning interventions that every time a new project comes up, we create specialized themes for it. And this is how we go about doing it. Next, socializers. Focus on socializing and drive to develop a network of friends and contacts. It's a peer group, think, pair, share, information feeds, friends, chat, relationships, all about communication and communication. The automatically when I say team building workshop, bang on, it fits, it fits into the socializer mindset. It doesn't matter whether team building is for a top team or the frontline team or a sales team or your compliance team. As long as the orientation of the training intervention is mapping to the orientation of this learner group, then your content has to have a theme. The gamified model has to have a theme which matches to that particular context. This is the third one. Fourth, of course, is the explorers. As you look at this particular element here, focus on exploring and a drive to discover the unknown. So this is the kind of mindset we're kindling here. Like, for example, if you talk about uh, a creative thinking workshop, in the creative thinking workshop, automatically exploring what else and what more can be done. If you're talking about certain kind of vision orientation in terms of how to imbibe the, the company culture, there are a billion ways you can do it. Exploratory mindset makes a person think beyond the obvious. So they prefer open-ended questions, inquiry-based learning, seek choice. When I said they, it is not the learner. In this case, the context of the, the learning itself, the training itself. So if you have an exploratory explorer mindset built into the content, the explorer mindset built into the gamified theme, automatically a solid synergy emerges and you have a lovely gamified e-learning module running. Let's pause here for a second. I would like you to reflect on your own mind and experience when was the last time you saw, participated, conducted, or designed a gamified e-learning module? I would not want you to answer the question right now. Think of it after the workshop gets, this webinar gets over, write down the particular gamified e-learning or gamified module you conducted, participated, designed, and see what was the content, 
what was the context what was the theme all about what were the game mechanics game mechanics points badges leaderboards what make a game game gamification happen uh you know what is what are mechanics then what was the flow what were the dynamics and then look at what they align automatically you, re you realize if they were aligned you would know it was successful if your gamification did not work as the way it was supposed to work and if you find that these two are not matching they are like a square peg in a round hole kind of thing happening now you know pinpointedly where one of the pain areas was i will not call it the pain area it could be one of the pain areas and you know where to start working upon so these four elements are what we should focus upon to map them to the learning content when i say such a thing automatically first thing which comes to your mind is oh yeah it's all theory easier said than done but how does it work out really so what i've done is i've actually put across uh, three scenarios three different kinds of scenarios is what i put across here so we look at each of this popular kind of training interventions and i'll tell you my suggested approach for it in the corporate e learning gamification scenario how does it actually work out and how can you go about doing it let's take the first case of compliance learning compliance training programs compliance e learning are the most popular ones are not the popular by choice popular because they are conducted every year and most of us have to go through them whether we like it or not but why does the question of not come in whether you like it or not can be in a positive way if you could enjoy the program for example if it's a prevention of sexual harassment or information security or health and safety any intervention compliance is a compliance so what are the characteristics compliance always happens when there's a collective group think towards a common cause people should feel like okay it's my my thing i have to comply to it i have to ensure that i'm doing what i'm supposed to do the most beautiful thing is i could not have been speaking on this topic at much at a much better time than where we are right now if you look at the world today where the world is of course there's no gamification going on but the world is in a very awkward situation thanks to covid-19 what is going on everybody across the world has been confined to uh, homes has been asked to do something called social distancing in the era of uh, social communication and everybody is exploring the world in a new way in india particularly and those of you who are participating from india you know what exactly is going on some locations the moment the prime minister said all of you please go home stay at home and there was a complete compliance the prime minister said without even forming a rule he just said and we listen and we stay at home at the same time there are people who were like not bothered they were coming out doing their bit and then curfew to be imposed in the same in, in those locations so what happens is people always do whatever comes to their mind but what i saw and why i'm mentioning about is there are a set of people who are constantly motivating and 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 communicating and talking to others to comply they're saying it's good for us please do it it's always for the best of society and they're able to influence the people to stay at home how much of a difficult they might feel so compliance is an area where group think always always works and as an organization when you're focusing on that your gamification approach has to be of a socializer approach why it should induce collective collaborative communication and action if you create a killer style game here or if you create a achiever style game here automatically based on last few minutes of conversation you know why it will not work and how the game theme will go completely off track from the learning content and they both will be running on two parallel tracks second employee induction or what we call as onboarding whether you call it as a pre induction induction post induction doesn't matter which part which style how you're doing it you're getting somebody on board with a different mindset and whom you feel would make sense for your company the person feels seeken uh, for this career here is a her career and the characteristics here are inducing exploratory mindset you want the person to explore come join us feel the presence we would like to know you you get to know us desire to know and understand now here explorer mindset is the perfect approach because the mindset the content and the context all match to that what if you bring in achiever achiever theme into it automatically the person will start running with the achievement direction all the while he is supposed to be inducing an explorer mindset in his content context of training so they will be off mark that's why an explorer mindset is very important for that a game theme and mechanics designed keeping the explorer mindset in mind and mapping or targeting that particular quadrant 
will be a solid bullseye strike for you to take your employee onboarding to the next level. On that note, if you have not already experienced employee onboarding, gamification of employee onboarding, I invite you to visit my website, playexemplar.com. There's a portfolio section out there. We've kept about four or five different styles of themes for employee onboarding. Check them out and see how they blend into what I'm talking today and how different kinds of organization can adapt, organizations can adapt to different kinds of themes. You might have a Mount Everest theme, you might have a world travel theme, or you might even have a space age theme. But all those themes look different, but the undercurrent is always Explorer. That's what you need to focus on. The third and last scenario for this uh, webinar, what I'm talking about, is FMCG field sales. When I say FMCG or fast moving consumer goods, I don't directly mean only FMCG. I mean anybody in that space where a youngster or a bunch of youngsters are out there in the market trying to make the sales and numbers happen. It's a sales force training is what I'm talking about. So when you have a sales force or a field force, you have a product training and sales techniques. This is what constantly they've been trained upon and e-learning and micro learning. A lot of stuff is done for them. Excel Pro does a lot of work for many companies on these interventions. So when I know so much, I'm looking at what characteristics are we talking about? Desire to achieve defined goals and focused information. These two elements are important. So when the, when the aspect of achievement is pretty ingrained into the element itself, it's a no brainer, I'll create an achiever oriented game theme and the probability of success goes high. What if I create a socializer game thing? I'll, I'll end up giving a lot of space for people to communicate, collaborate, do something, but the output, what is desired, orientation what is desired and theme might not match and that's why for you to make your gamification work the first and foremost thing is think of your learner as a gamer then look at your training content or learning content what kind of a competency are you talking about which of these four quadrants is the competency aiming at automatically work with your e-learning development partners or the gamification development partners or in case you don't have one i'm more than happy to be of help to you either as an assignment or just for the fun of talking to you, then aim at creating a theme or a concept. Creativity is important. Game mechanics are more important. Even if you don't have an out of the world theme, the mechanics are right. Gamification runs on game mechanics and game dynamics. It doesn't always run on out of the world themes. So on that note, these three scenarios, I hope we're able to align well with you. If you have more thoughts on that, you can always shoot a mail to me. I'll address uh, specific uh, questions over mail later on. On that note, the summary of today's intervention, this, this is of course coming to the end of the micro webinar. It's a micro webinar, so it won't drag long. Think of your learner as a gamer. That's the message I'm giving you today. Aim at the competency, aim at the quadrants, choose the quadrant, game theme matching the game quadrant automatically without you making much of an effort. The learner starts feeling like a gamer and learns effortlessly and seamlessly to get you what you want, and they get what they want. So that was the whole message of today's uh, webinar. I hope you enjoyed learning with me today. On that note, if you have any questions, please visit my website, playxilco.com, type in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to address it for you. So once again, thank you very much for joining me for this micro webinar today. As all of you might be aware, this is fifth of the 21 series webinars I'm conducting uh, over the 21 day period this season to share knowledge about very specific aspects related to gamification, games, micro learning, uh, e-learning in general. So I look forward to seeing you in my forthcoming webinars over the next days and weeks. If you missed out my past webinars, not a problem. Please visit my YouTube channel, Excel Pro e-learning's YouTube channel. You can always take a look at those videos and I look forward to interacting with you soon. Take care, have a great day ahead. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.